We're turning in the Word of God this morning to Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, please. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, and we're going to read here from verse 41 to verse 44. And I want to speak uh, this morning on the widow's might and what the Lord Jesus has to teach us from this passage. So here we are, uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. And verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Amen. And we know that God will bless to us the reading of his precious word. Uh, this particular passage of scripture that we have read this morning takes place in the Passion Week when the Lord Jesus and the, uh, had went in to the temple. He had overturned the money changers. Remember, uh, he came then to teach God's word in God's house, in, in the house that was registered and known as the, the house of God, the house of prayer and the Lord Jesus went there to teach God's word and to preach in the final uh, days of his ministry. Uh, primarily Jesus taught and ministered in around Capernaum and Galilee and uh, the various regions and did very little preaching and very little teaching in Jerusalem but here he's come now as the Messiah and uh, as a result of his preaching and teaching here he's rejected of the the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians. They've all tested him, they've all questioned him. He spoke to them in parables, he taught on the, the parable of the, the wicked husband men. You can read that just through in the earlier chapters. And so now at the end of the day, uh, the Lord Jesus, he's uh, Tuesday evening in the Passion Week, he's uh, sitting in this <coughs> court of the women he's sitting next to the the treasury the place where the people put in their money their free will offerings into the house of God so here's if you can just imagine the Lord Jesus after his day's teaching he's just sitting and he's resting he's observing and he's watching that what's taking place as men and women uh, put their offerings in to the treasury for the temple's uh, keep and for the Levites and so forth. And he's observing those who are giving into the treasury box. And uh, this is the a free will offering box. You can just put in what you want. There's no one to say how much or how little. It's all free will. And uh, Jesus didn't condemn anyone for giving of their wealth and resources. This is not what he's teaching here uh, because we all need uh, to give to the work of God. Thank God for those uh, who have been blessed with uh, great wealth and who are able and willing to do that and desire to do that. That's a, that's a, a marvelous thing for the work of God certainly needs finance. The Lord Jesus, he needed money uh, to minister as well. Judas, remember he was responsible for looking after the purse and for buying the necessities for to meet their daily needs of rations and food and so forth. So even Jesus himself needed finance uh, to fulfill and carry out his ministry. But what is the Lord Jesus really uh, teaching here? Well, uh, the Lord Jesus has a lot to teach us here in this. And uh, money is needed for the work of God. All are needed both those who can give plenty and those who can give a little. 
Little and much together go a long way in the work of God. John Wesley, uh, the great Methodist, said in relation to uh, the Lord's work, he said, Get all you can, keep all you can, and give all you can to the Lord's work. That was Wesley's motto. And John Bunyan, he was a wonderful man, the man who wrote Pilgrim's Progress. He said, uh, <clears throat> he read a little uh, rhyme. He said, there was a man, some called him mad. The more he gave, the more he had. And you find that is true indeed, because no one can outgive the Lord. Not that we give to get, but it's just a fact. And that's the way God seems to bless those who bless his work. So uh, we want to look at the passage from two aspects, really. What was the widow expressing here in giving these two mites? And what was the Lord Jesus teaching his disciples? And of course, teaching us through her life and through her example. He had been teaching all day uh, to the others. And now he's going to teach a wonderful lesson to his own disciples and for us, the future believers of the church of Jesus Christ. And so we can learn some truths uh, from this wonderful passage. And so the Lord Jesus, uh, he says that Jesus sat over against the treasury. And so the Lord Jesus, he was interested in seeing what was taking place in relation to those who were giving of their uh, finance into the house of God, into the, the temple. And uh, as he sat there, he was sitting and he was observing what was taking place. And uh, he, matched, he, he watched many as they came and went. And there, I'm sure there were those who gave and there were others who passed by. Uh, and the Lord Jesus was just carefully watching and observing. You know the way some people say they love to people watch? Just sit on a uh, on a bench seat and watch people going up and down and people watch. And some people seem to enjoy that. Well, this is what the Lord seems to be doing here. And then uh, we read, And Jesus, <coughs> he beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. So he was watching what was taking place, those who were casting their money in. It was an open box. You just uh, placed your, it was like a trumpet shape. And you put your money into that and it dropped down in to the treasury box. And it says, And many that were rich cast in much. And uh, the Lord Jesus is not condemning that. That's great that uh, the rich people were, were giving to the work of God. As we said, all finance is required to sustain God's work. And bless God for those that are in a position to give much into the work of God. And then the Lord Jesus goes on to say, And there came a certain a certain poor widow. And so first of all we need to notice that she was a widow. That's very important. She was a widow. And widows in the Bible uh, were those who their husband was dead. Uh, this lady, she had no male provider. She had no husband uh, to look after her, to provide for her needs. And we got to realize, you know, there's no DHSS and there's no disability cars and allowances. The government didn't provide, the temple didn't undertake for their needs. So this lady has no way for uh, her husband to provide for her needs. She's totally now uh, dependent on trusting. Uh, living day to day for her daily needs to be met. So she didn't have uh, any uh, husband. She was a widow. But she did have faith in the God of Israel, the great provider. She had that much. Uh, she was God dependent. And that's a wonderful blessing to be God dependent. You know, that's what's wrong with our world today. We're not God-dependent. We're This world is self-dependent, man-dependent, government-dependent, not depending upon God. Uh, years ago, people were more appreciative. They had so little 
as regards uh, wealth and uh, finances and resources, but they were so blessed with uh, good neighbours and friends, and they were so dependent upon God and uh, harvest services, thanksgiving services. People prayed about the weather, had a great respect and fear of God. And uh, this woman, she was God-dependent. Obviously, he had met her needs before. Uh, It wasn't that she was just a widow on this particular day. She had been a widow for uh, a number of years, I believe. And certainly, she had known that God had met with her before. And we see here, not only is she a widow, but the Lord Jesus is very precise. Because he says that she's a a poor widow. Verse uh, 42. And there came a certain poor widow. So we see there that uh, she was poor. Poor regards finance. Poor regards wealth. All All the money that this dear lady had was in her hand. And you know she had it in the heart of her hand. It didn't take much room to hold this two little mites uh, was in her hand all that she had she possessed was in her hand and and you know uh, that's what what she was blessed with two little mites and whilst it was in her hand it was hers and she had every right to do with it as she wanted because she owned it it belonged to her it was her possession and uh, she didn't have to open her hand and release it into the box. She could have held on to it. I'm sure she she had very pressing needs. And this is an amazing truth here that the Lord is bringing before us. All the money that she possessed in the world was in her hand. Yes, she was poor in monetary resources. But she wasn't poor in character or poor in spirit in the sense that she didn't trust God. And we see that really she was rich above many because she was rich in God. She was rich in her faith. And as we look at this, we can see that uh, her devotion to God, because the Lord Jesus is going to bring this out to us, that even though she was poor, she had other tremendous qualities. She was rich in character rich in character towards God. And we see here her devotion to God. She's in the Lord's house. Here's where she wants to be. She's in the Lord's house. She may be coming from the place of prayer, listening to God's word being read. She She's coming from the place where prayer is want to be made this this devotion that she has to God, she's in the Lord's house. And you know, that's wonderful that we have a desire to be in the house of God, the the Lord's house. And to know that for many of us, we're missing the house of the Lord. And maybe soon in the will of God, we'll be back there and we'll have a greater appreciation for the house of God and for the word of God and the people of God and all the blessings that come with being in God's house. And this lady, we see her devotion. She was in the house of the Lord. The house of prayer, as the Lord Jesus called it, for he said that, didn't he, to the money changers, this my father's house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. So he recognized, indeed, the house of prayer. So that's her devotion. Under worship of Jehovah, as her saviour she was coming to the house of prayer the house of jehovah the house of yahweh the god of israel the god of her of her forefathers abraham isaac and jacob and she's coming not only to pray but also to worship and she's coming into god's house to worship the lord and to worship god as her saviour and her redeemer They would have had the books of Psalms to read and she would have known the word of God and here she's coming to worship him and to give Jehovah the adoration of her heart. And that's just wonderful because all of this is is portrayed here 
uh, in her act of what she's going to do. And we see her love also for the house of God because she's going to release uh, this money into the treasury. And that's a heart of love. Only the heart of love would release all into the treasury of God. And she's a love for the house of God and she has a love for, for the God of the house, uh, the God of Israel. And she's just coming with this thankful heart in to this little place, this sanctuary, this oasis to be in God's house. Even in the midst of all her needs, she still has time to come to the house of God. Poor and all that she is financially, she still has time for the house of God. And really we're getting to the crux of it here. For it says, and there came, verse 42, and there came a certain a poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. Two mites with make a farthing. Here we see her tremendous sacrifice. Her tremendous sacrifice, because the Lord Jesus says in verse 44, uh, that she did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And we see that's a tremendous sacrifice that she gave. Someone has said it's not a sacrifice if it doesn't cost. Do you remember David when he was looking for the threshing floor of Arona? Uh, he paid uh, the man the money and said, Shall I give unto God that which costs me nothing? And so there's a sacrifice here. And this lady is releasing uh, from her hand her heart's desire. What was going to release her hand was the motivation that was in her heart. Her hand was responding to her heart. Isn't that tremendous, brothers and sisters? It's the hand, the open hand, that responds from the touched heart. The Lord Jesus uh, had touched her heart. The power of God in the house of God had touched her heart. And her sacrifice, her devotion... And her love and her worship for the Lord Jesus is now going to release her hand because of her love for Jehovah God. And we see that in her sacrificial giving. She, she opens up her hand because her heart is touched. It reminds me of the story of the late Billy Kennedy when they were building a new church in Banbridge. And uh, one of the local traditional churches... Uh, was in amazement and he said to Billy he says where or how do you seem to manage to raise all this money uh, thousands of pounds to build this new church building he says uh, we are organizing uh, different events and we can't seem to raise much finance and Billy Kennedy said to him he says you go after uh, their pockets he said we go after their souls and then when you get the souls, then the Lord gets their pocket. And that's really true, isn't it? And the, the Lord gets our hearts, then he gets our hands, doesn't he? And he, he gets our wallets and our purses and whatever is in them. We gladly give it as unto the Lord. That's the sacrifice. And we see here what, is, what happens now, her release. She, she gives it, the Lord Jesus is sitting He's looking, he's watching on. Here's this poor widow. Of course, he knows all of this through uh, the Spirit of God. He's God Almighty. Uh, he knows uh, her heart. He knows all about her. And she's coming here with her giving, giving from her heart and her hands. It takes the two working together, faith and works, uh, faith and action. And her heart responds uh, to what she has she hasn't much she, but she has a little and yet this little is a vast amount to her because it's all she has but her heart is moved and her heart is motivated and her heart is melted because she is desirous to give to God is not a tremendous place to be to be melted and moved and motivated to give finance uh, to the work of God and here's this dear lady, and she's going to release her hand now. And she's these two little mates, where she got them from, how she earned them, we do not know. But she came into this place 
to this treasury with one purpose she came to give. And that's a tremendous uh, blessing, brothers and sisters. She came to give. She could have left the temple by another means, by another exit. But she purposely came past the treasury box because she was going to give from her heart and release her hand and give what she had. And this was a free will offering. She gave all. It was free will. It wasn't forced. She didn't say, of two mates, one for you, Lord, and one for me. Wouldn't this just melt your heart? She just opened her hand at the top of the trumpet shaped vial and in it went. It wouldn't have made much of noise just rattling down in there. It wouldn't have made much of an impact in comparison to those that had threw in much. It would have been buried in amongst all the other great gifts. But my friends, the Lord Jesus saw it all. He seen what happened. He, he heard the moment uh, the little mite rattles uh, in the bottom of the treasury box. He heard the sound. He heard the little tinkle, the little jingle. And uh, his heart, the Lord Jesus' heart was touched. And it's amazing. She gave all the money she had. Two little mites. It reminds me of uh, uh, the old farthing. These two mites, they're, they're the smallest Roman. They're wee brass coins, wee small things, about the size of your thumbnail. And uh, to us, we can identify it, for those of us who are old enough to remember uh, a farthing in old money. Well, that was a quarter of a penny. And remember, myself, there used to be a wee chitty wren on them, on one side of them. And you'd have went down into the wee sweet shop, you could have got two... Uh, two chews for a half penny and uh, four chews for a penny and you got one for a farthing and you know remember giving the wee farthing over and getting the wee the wee sugar cube the wee pink one that was it was marvelous and you chewed away on it you know half a farthing uh, apparently years ago you could have got one of those though I don't remember them but this is how small this offering was Small uh, in regards monetary value, but oh, it was mighty and vast in heavenly treasure. And this little lady, she opened up her hand and she gave all the money that she possessed at that time. It's not a remarkable offering, a tremendous offering. She gave all the money that she possessed at that time. You know, we're all... Uh, delight and love to give to the work of God and no matter how much we give we can't outgive that we can't outgive that she gave everything every everything financially that she possessed she gave and she gave it with a willing heart and I can just picture the Lord Jesus watching her seeing all the others coming maybe they're standing there they're opening up their wee money bags and they're uh, counting out the money and making it rattle and hoping others will see it and dropping the coins in one by one and giving in much. Obviously the Lord Jesus knew there were others who were giving in plenty. And this dear wee lady, uh, she just come to the treasury box and she opened up her hand and she dropped in the two little mites. And so she came and she gave and she was gone in a moment of time. No fuss. She just give from the willing heart. Isn't that wonderful? How this wee woman just came and give all that she had. No one noticed. No one took notice of her but Jesus. And isn't it lovely that she did it unto God. And in doing it unto God, sure, she did it unto him. And you know, nobody's seen only Jesus. He's seen her. He noticed. And that reminds me of the story of Hagar and, and uh, Ishmael and when she wrote in Genesis 16 and 13 thou God seest me and you know God watches us and God sees all that we do uh, he knows what we give and he knows what we keep I uh, remember a man said on one occasion darling it's not what we give it's what we keep but we're limited aren't we 
But this is what the Lord Jesus said. He he seen it all and he was watching. And you know, this woman she gave from a thankful heart, this wee widow woman. She gave from a thankful heart. And you know, that's the teaching of the New Testament today that Paul teaches in Second Corinthians 9. And uh, verse 7 he says, Every man according as he purposed in his heart. And this is what this woman did. She had purposed in her heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. She gave from the thankful heart. And uh, in the word of God, in the New Testament, Paul says that we have to give from uh, a thankful heart as well. Uh, give not grudgingly, or not forced upon you, but just give as the Lord leads you to give. And give it with a with a willing hand and with a willing heart. God loveth the cheerful giver. And it's not so much the amount that you give, but the motivation of your giving, that you're giving with a cheerful heart. I know a lot of people today uh, emphasize on tithing, that you have to give a tithe, uh, of your income to the Lord. Uh, but tithing really is an Old Testament uh, command. The, it was for the Jews, for the Israelites. They were commanded to give a tenth of their tithe for the maintenance of the, of the temple and for the Levites. But the New Testament teaching doesn't teach tithing. It teaches that we are to give a uh, with a willing heart. Uh, some people, if they were to tithe, they would be giving too much. And others, if they were to tithe, they would be giving too little. And so the Lord leaves it up to the individual. We are to give with the willing heart. And to give as you desire. And that way then the Lord says, there's no obligation. Uh, you give to the Lord's work as you see fit. And Paul reminded the Philippian church, they had given a very generous gift to Paul and to the church. And in Philippians 4.19, in its context, Paul said to them, because they had given unto the work of God, he says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, the Lord loveth the cheerful giver. And the New Testament pattern is the free will offering, the free will giving. So <clears throat> she had her uh, dependence upon God, hadn't she? She had her faith in him. The Lord obviously had met her daily needs in the past, and she knew what it was to trust God for her provision. And this in the word of God teaches that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you and it's amazing how the Lord Jesus he cast his eyes upon her he watched her as she came and cast the money into the temple treasury and then left the precincts of the temple house and went on about her business but you know what God has recorded it in the word of God for us to teach his disciples and to teach us what the Lord saw yes the Lord had met her daily needs in the past to others She's only a poor widow, but to Jesus she's a precious saint and a sacrificial giver, a role model indeed. Uh, and I would believe that she left the temple that day with the joy of the Lord in her heart. She had God's joy. The Holy Spirit, I believe, would have blessed that dear woman as she left the precincts of, of God's house that day, having met with God and uh, given what you had of her substance to the Lord and left his house with God's joy and with God's presence at having given to God's work to sustain the work of God. And so what a wonderful example we have here. So what was Jesus teaching his disciples and us then through her life an example? 
Well, where she, he's teaching uh, her commitment to himself, her commitment to God. And you know, I've always been challenged by this dear lady. Her example and her commitment to the Lord. She gave all she had. You know, she gave all that she had to live. She gave it to the Lord. And that's a challenge, isn't it? And uh, she put God first and she put herself last. And that's a tremendous blessing and a tremendous example for us, brothers and sisters. She put the Lord first. And I believe that's what God wants for us. Paul writes that in Romans uh, chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. R.T. Candle, he said that um, one man said, you know, that he had so little money that he couldn't afford to give anything to God's work. And R.T. said to him, I believe you can't afford not to give to the Lord's work. But the Lord doesn't uh, coerce us. It's free will. And he wants it from the heart. He would rather have £10 from the heart given thankfully as £50 given grudgingly. It's the heart that God looks upon and it's the heart that God desires to bless that giveth from the heart. So no matter, no matter how much uh, we give, we can't match her offering of finance. She gave all the money she possessed to God. The Lord Jesus is not teaching in this passage that we are to go and uh, give everything, all our finance and give it away to the Lord's work. That's not what he's teaching. But he is reminding us here of the lady's heart, the widow woman's heart, her sacrificial heart in putting God first and giving to the Lord. As I said, we can't give all financially. But we can give to Jesus all that we have of our lives. That's what he really after. Give him all of our lives as a daily offering to the Lord Jesus. As he lived his life, a daily offering doing the Father's will. And so the Lord wants us to live our lives as that daily offering, as that sacrifice. Giving our all for him, opening up our hands. As the word of God says, the Lord himself openeth up his hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. And there's no greater display of the open hand of God and liberality at the place called Calvary. For there he opened up his hands for the nails of the cross. And there he gave himself as the greatest sacrifice of all when he opened his hand not to uh, dispense two mites into the treasury but to the nails of the Roman soldiers to the cross of Calvary to shed his precious blood that you and I could be saved for ye are bought with a price which is the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot salvation can't be purchased by finance but we are bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus. And there on Calvary we see the opened hands displayed and the pain of the nails and all that the Saviour went through on Calvary to purchase for us this so great salvation. And how can we, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, how can we tighten our hands around the things we possess on the possessions that we have, that we desire to hold on to, when the Lord would have us to open up our hands and to give it all unto the Lord, and that the Lord could take it and use it for his glory. Not only our finance, but our talents, our lives, our all, that we would open it all up and surrender it all to him, and make our lives that daily offering, and that living sacrifice which is holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And so the Lord Jesus was reminding these disciples of this dear lady's heart. And let us read it again. 
And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And you know, brothers and sisters, when we get to heaven, when we get to glory, we'll be so glad and so thankful that we gave what we can. I remember the late Billy Patterson uh, in the little mission hall that he looked after for 62 years, a wonderful man of God and a great role model as any to any young Christian. And he used to stand and he, he used to say with the tears running down his cheeks, I can see him now in my mind's eye. And he used to say, when we get to heaven, we'll have wished we had given him more. Oh, brothers and sisters, let's make that happen now. Let's not go to heaven uh, with that attitude. But let's give it all to him now. Whatever he desires, let's give our lives to him. Uh, like the way him says, as a daily sacrifice unto him, the servant king. Let us give all to him that he may take these lives of ours and use them for his glory. And, and really the bottom line is everything that we have, everything that we possess, we have received it from his open hand, the hand of the Lord Jesus. He giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. And he has given to us everything we possess. We live and move and have our very being in Christ. The health and strength we possess to earn finance. Every resource that we have, we have because we have received from him. Oh, what a wonderful saviour is Jesus my Lord. What a wonderful saviour to me. What a blessing to know. What a testimony she had. A widow woman. Uh, poor in this world's goods, but rich in faith to God, a love for the house of God, a devotion for the God of Israel, and such a passion for to give from a willing heart. Oh, may the Lord help us to have a heart like this, a heart like this dear woman, where her heart would move her hand to release all she had into the treasury of God. May our hearts be so moved uh, like this this morning. You know, brothers and sisters, we've only one life and it will soon be past. And only what's done for the Lord Jesus will last. And as I uh, think personally on my own level, uh, life is short, time is short and souls are perishing. And we need to do all we can to win the lost for the Lord Jesus. We need to give all, and when we give our all then, he'll give his all uh, as we seek to serve him. So may God uh, bless these uh, few words to your hearts this morning and encourage you in the faith and strengthen you and build you up and give you the heart of this poor widow. And she may be poor in finance, but she is rich in faith and rich in Christ. Father in heaven, we thank thee for your precious word. We bless you, Lord, for the example and life of this dear lady. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for recording this for us in your word. And pray, Lord, you'll give us a heart like this widow woman, that we would open up our hands eh, to do the will of God and to serve you as best as we can. So we thank you, Lord, and we praise thee. And we thank you for those that give to the work of God financially. Thank you for our own fellowship and for all who give so liberally to sustain and maintain your work there and for those who give to missions and uh, those who give to seek, Lord, the salvation of men and women. We praise you then and we thank thee. And we ask, Lord, you'll bless your children today and encourage them and strengthen them. And thank you for this wonderful teaching from the precious precious word of God 
And so our Father undertake and bless each one we pray. For we ask this all in Jesus' precious and worthy name. Amen.